to our MC, Phil Seymour. Thanks, Jill. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to day three here at the SpreadX World Grand Prix at the Morningside Arena in Leicester. <laughs> Round one is the best of seven frames. It's time now to welcome our players. We begin on table number two with a two-time ranking event finalist, Zhao Gudong, and a finalist in last month's Scottish Open, Nopon Senka. Table number one, a three-time ranking event winner, Ricky Walden, and the three-time UK champion, China's greatest ever player. Enter the dragon, Ding Junhui. <laughs> What do you like to call? Ed. It is okay, still fresh in the memory that Ding Jun Wei, at one point in his career, declined to such an extent he was the eighth highest ranked Chinese player on the tour. Hard to imagine now he's come back to something like his best. He is the highest ranked Chinese player at the moment. He's definitely favoured for this match but do not discount Ricky Walden in any contest he ever plays, because when he when plays ready, well, when you ready? he's a match for anyone. Thank you, the first frame, Ding Junhui to break. Head to head wise, as Jill said, it's very, very close, but Walden had the better of their earlier encounters. <coughs> Dingers held sway more recently. One. And he played it nicely, although he got into the cue ball more than expected. Played around the back of the black, not into it. Yeah, it's great to see Ding Ricky back playing Walden. well. I think One. he's a very popular player. You know, he's brought a lot of good into <laughs> snooker in China. He's the, the sort of flag bearer for it all. But like you say, he went quiet for so long. Something about that UK championship he absolutely loves. It's kept his ranking afloat. Been beaten in the last two finals. Yes, this year, Ding had to qualify, unbelievably. Ended up making 13 centuries in that tournament. Ricky play was not a great one. Not even sure if he got a double kiss on the red, but lost control of the object ball. One. I mean, this event clearly, these two are here because they've earned the right to be Yellow here. Ball. I think Ronnie mentioned that, didn't he? The reason he's playing is because he earned the right to be in this event by picking up enough points. And these two are the same. There's no one out of form players because they just wouldn't be here. Yes, in the case of Ding, he's sixth on the one year list, so almost certainly going to be involved in the, the players championship next in Telford. And you would assume in the tour championship as well. Different scenario for Walden though. He's 27th on the one year list coming here. So needs to get going.
Well, he's played three or four shots so far that have not been as he would like them. I mean, even that shot, he thought he played it as a shot to nothing, but he hit the red. And now he's left that red as a possible start of a ding, so he hasn't quite settled in yet, Ricky Walden. One. Very interested to see how Ding Zhenhui plays today. You know, he's, his record in these sort of events is not Eight. great, to be honest. The home nations and the shorter format and this player series, you know, his record has not been as good as it might be. But we all know what a terrific player he is. In last year's World Grand Prix, he made <clears throat> the perfect start. Beat Stuart Bingham 4-0, looked good. Raised expectations, and then in the next round, he lost 4-0 to Mark Williams. Sixty. Seventeen. He always plays that shot so well, Ding, because he doesn't just run through the red above. He tries to punch into it and disturb other reds. It's one of the reasons he's such a wonderful break builder. Had that one four seven at the Masters. Wonderful, great moment. Twenty four. Yeah. Second time he's made one there. Matched, of course, by Mark Allen later in the week. He's to get into the cue ball here just to screw back for the red that sticks out. Oh, he's gone into them. Wow. That's a... Bold shot. When he was initially queuing it, I just thought he was playing on the loose 30. red. And given that Ding is more prone to inaccuracy when he plays with power, that wasn't exactly characteristic, but it was beautifully played in the end. And that 31. was a nice shot. He wanted to use that left side of the pocket to get the perfect count on the other red. That was as played. He didn't just nearly miss it. He wanted to hit it like that. 38. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned power shots. I think that's 39. the one thing with Ding Jinhui. When he does play power shots, hits the ball hard these days. Sometimes he puts in a, a sort of quick final backswing. He doesn't do it on the shots in amongst them. He's still a bit of an artist when it comes to break building, as he always has been. I may get a chance later on to see, but for now, 46. everything is good. He's in and he's looking good. 47. But this has always been his strength. I mean, obviously, everybody likes to be around the black spot, but some are better at it than others. 50. And he's one of the best of all time. We focused on the 147 at the Masters. The fact is, though, he was scuppered there in terms of the, the results by a very slow start. 55. Just didn't get going until maybe it was too late. 
Looks like he's rectified that. Well, that's right. It looked for all the world like he was going to be 5 0 down in that match. And Sullivan missed it. A red that I don't think I've ever seen him 62. miss an easier one. When Ding pinched the frame, then all of a sudden the break started coming. But as you rightly say, it all happened a bit too late. But in a way, I'm glad O'Sullivan missed that red. Otherwise, the, the 147 mightn't have happened. Sixty-three. Oh, well, he's gone too far, but he'll be heartened by the fact that now Walden requires a snooker at least. Risky shot. Jing Junwei, sixty-three. One of those shots where you don't want to play a foul, but had he played the foul and not the red in, that would have been still working out for him. But currently, Walden wants a snooker. One. The signs are very encouraging for Ding. Brown A little worry his opponent. Looks sharp, doesn't he? Yeah, he's knuckled down, I think, in the last couple of years of the pandemic. Five. Brought him to the UK and he probably wanted to be at home with his family. And his game definitely Six. took a bit of a hit for that. But because he'd won the UK Championship 2019. But I think now he's realised that he's a snooker player. 13. A very highly famous snooker player, especially in China. But anyway, he started nicely, as you say. Jing Junwei, 13, and the frame. Yes, primarily with a break of 63. Ding quickly gets the first frame under his belt. Day three of the World Grand Prix of 2024 has begun. Over on table two, a very good start indeed from Nopon Sankam. A break of 81. Nopon Sankam, 81. Securing the first frame the against Zhao Gudong. You know, Zhao should be feeling at home. He's from Chongqing in China. A massive city frame. over there. Ricky to break. And Chongqing is twinned with a city in England by the name of Leicester. Will that be good vibes for Zhao? Well, not now, at the moment. And not particularly good vibes for Walden either in this match. Didn't really make any impact on the opening frame. It's a nice pot. He knocked in one in the first frame, which was a good one, but then didn't play a good shot after that. Even the break off here, he was miles away from the direction. So maybe he'll settle in now that he's got this opportunity. I think what Phil was saying about Ding Jin Wee, slightly to a lesser extent, would apply to this man. Three times a ranking winner. Four. Sort of gone missing his highest ranking of six, but he's been sort of in the in the mid rankings or middle to high rankings for a while now, not quite reaching those heights again. 
five. I think his problems started with a back injury, which meant that he was limited in terms of the amount of practice he could do. His ranking deteriorated as a consequence. And even though the back improved, Ten. the confidence didn't because he was under so much pressure. It's been a lengthy process to haul himself back up the standings. Well, it's not easy to get on a colour from here because can't run through. Black, of course, completely tied up. Screw off the other red and back for the blue, presumably. Oh, that's played yeah, ever been. so well. Sixteen. Seventeen. Well, it, it, early in the match, but I think he's playing slightly quicker than I've seen him before in this break. Just a few shots, get down and played the shots quicker. Because you can find yourself looking at shots for so long that in the end you find a problem. You might have been guilty of that, but I think a bit of fluency. Well, to his game because he didn't qualify for the players' championship events last year. Didn't get through. Didn't play in the World Grand Prix, so he wasn't in the 32 on the one-year list. So something's improved. That's why he's here. Thank you. 23. He's got all the shots stunned with a trace of left hand running side there to take him through the bolt colours and back down. Twenty nine. Yeah, he's won a lot of matches of this campaign so far. Last sixteen European Masters, same thing, English Open. Quarter finalist Northern Ireland Open. It's not been headline stuff, but it's been solid. Thirty four. Thirty five. You know, Neil, I think you'll agree with this. This is the 418th world ranking event ever 41. played. And his victory in the Shanghai Masters in 2008 was 42. one of the most remarkable triumphs in that list of tournaments. I mention this an awful lot, but uh, although I'm guilty of repetition, I don't mind because it's an extraordinary thing. 48. In order to win that event, he beat Stephen Hendry, Neil Robertson, Steve Davis, Mark Selby, and Ronnie O'Sullivan. Thank you. 49. It's like a Hall of Fame of snooker. He's beaten on the way, isn't it? To winning that. Yeah, I mean, the fact that his three ranking wins are all in Asia suggests that perhaps he's not talked about as 55. much as he should be in this country. Definitely playing a little quicker. 56. A brisker pace than what I've seen him. 
for a while. There's always going to be shots you have to look round at, of course. Yeah, that's quick enough, 18 seconds. Quicker than you'd think, the Walden. Sixty-two. Well, he's looked at the score, so he knows that the next red is more important than getting onto a colour if it's going to be a problem. It's been a good break this because he, the balls were a little awkwardly placed. Black was never on. Yes, he hasn't quite put the frame away. One snooker required, but that was a fine break from Walden. The problem Dinger's got is he needs one snooker to tie, but he's not going to be able to take the black with these reds, so it's going to be more than one snooker now. He's already on the pink, so he's going to need at least a couple. Seven. Think, well, what's the point in putting the red if I've got no colour? Because it's definitely frame over there, so he's refusing the red he's close to. Ding Jung Wei, seven. Yes, and by opening up the black, he's improved his chances. They're still slim. Walden, quite correctly, being circumspect. He's far too experienced to, to drop his guard. <laughs> when you've been a professional for 23 years, 24 years, actually, Ricky Walden, he will have lost frames from positions of superiority like this. Am I right in saying, Neil, that Steve Davis once won two consecutive frames against you after needing snookers in both? Yeah, that happened to me. I think people like Steve Davis and you know, Mark Selby, John Higgins, real players that you never write off. I think Selby is the modern-day player that will always try and carry on. And even here, you know, you, you wouldn't be assuming he'd won the frame against a Mark Selby because we'll see him playing again later. His first match finished very late, didn't it, on that first evening, goodness, after midnight. And his victory. Nice part. Well, if you could take two red blacks here, and I think he might be able to, and 
lay an awkward snooker, you just don't know. Don't know what is possible until you try it. It's game. Eight. I'll have to try and wriggle the cue ball out of there. No, he's managed it. Nine. Now, where the yellow and brown are, that's actually a really good snookering ball. They are, those two bolt colours, because the cue ball fit snugly in behind one of those. And you leave a pretty horrible snooker to be faced with. 16. And if you can just play the perfect shot, get the snooker, leave the, the red ball near one of the high-value colours, then you've got an opponent in bother. Oh, there it is. 16. So what you said, Phil, is right. The flame is absolutely still live. I mean, the free ball possibilities here are pretty strong. You've got to try and hit it, but if he goes past it, or he could hit a high-value colour. It's the other thing, if it's pink or black, then uh, all of a sudden, he doesn't need a snooker at all. He can win. A nasty business, this one. Well, taking a minute plus on this shot, entirely understandable. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd fancy him to hit it, but the fear factor of what can go wrong is playing one cushion. You can often slide past a one cushion escape more so than two cushions. Very good. He will be, you'd think, and another snooker here, or the chance of one. That's a relief to Walden, for sure, hitting that. When it comes to laying snookers that he had to get, the one frame in Ding's career I always think about was a, a semi-final of the China Open against Gary Wilson. He actually lost the match. And he lost that frame, but he got so many, it was ridiculous. But, of course, Wilson escaped. We talk about snookers required, it's actually successful snookers required. What well, that hasn't done him any great favours. He's just looking, he needs two snookers now. If he takes the blue, it's still two snookers that he needs. 34 in it, so not looking too hopeful. But you'd fancy there is a snooker here. Or a strong chance of one again. Six. Nice way. touch. Six. Mm. Leaving a free ball here is not quite so serious because it'd be a two point free ball, so he'd still need another one. But he hasn't missed it yet, Walden. Foul. Ding Jumway. Four. Not a free ball either, but another snooker required. Mm. 
Just got the feeling this frame could take a turn, though. I mentioned him free ball, of course. He may be relatively new to the game. Not know what we mean by that. But if there's a foul and then you can't hit both sides of the ball on, you can take a free ball. That's what it means. You take the points. Morgan was cruising. Now he's concerned. I think Ding would have liked that uh, yellow ball to just held up so there's room to go around the back. It looks to be a quite a big target, this. You either hit it off the one cushion or you can go to the bolt cushion and hit it off two. It amounts to the same thing. Ooh, he needed all of the target, though, didn't he, big or not? After that, Walden will be relieved. Quite a big target to hide behind. Intriguing frame though this. By the way, it's an identical scenario across the arena on the other table. Zhao Gudong needs a snooker against Nopon Sankom. At least he did. Just this second, Sankom has spotted the last red, so he's going to take a 2 0 lead. Well, it's been 12 and a half minutes since he potted frame ball, or what he thought was frame ball. He's still in that position, but in the meantime, Ding has put him under pressure. That's why he has to be patient before the frame can be awarded to him. Dear, now we've got Five. a different game. Is this a free Fusion ball way. or not? Four. Julian Bell having a look. It isn't. That's uh, some relief, I think, because he could have taken the blue back on the yellow, and he could have been away. Obviously, that green is saving the day for Walden. And he's probably more uncomfortable than he was because two snookers he, he wanted Ding Junhui and put Walden under pressure since. Of course, this World Grand Prix famous for one of the great TV escapes. Semi-final a few years ago. Ryan Day won a frame after needing four snookers against Marco Fu. It can happen. 
And when you see the frame ebbing away, there's no greater pressure because you know it should have been under lock and key already. Another <laughs> very good shot from Ding Xinhui. He doesn't need the snooker now, but getting one is not doing his chances any harm. The comparative emotions, Ding is enjoying this a whole lot more than Mr. Walden. Foul, and a miss. Ding Chunwei, four. Well, the, wheel, the wheel hasn't quite fallen off, but it's become loose, definitely, and it's a free ball this time. The green is still now to the side cushion so you know he has still got himself in a favourite position but he's looking a bit bit rocky now missing all these snooker escapes black ball of course the other thing is that Walden needs the green anyway so that's not even helping him two Two. Got away with that one. And now the frame is absolutely wide open with the development of that green. Pain continues. He might be able to get to an edge, but he can't pot it. I'm not even sure he can see any part of this. These are the worst things for a snooker player. The, the thought of losing a frame where your opponent needed a snooker or two. Now, he's just got no idea where the ball's going to finish here. He got a little bit lucky himself. He had his head down, didn't he? he was he'd lost all control. Meanwhile, I think Ding is looking to get him something nasty again. In behind the brown would be horrid. That will do, I think.
foul. And a miss. Ding Jun Wei, four. Of course, now snookers aren't required, so a miss can be called. And these penalty points are piling up, Neil. Well, they really are. I mean, this is uh, very unpleasant for Walden. He's been put in some good snookers, you know. There's no getting away from it. He's not the first name, as I mentioned, you'd think of Ding Jun Wei for getting a series of snookers like this. It's not usually something he thinks about. You know, when you're involved in scrappy exchanges, which by their very nature, getting snookers are scrappy. Five. To pot a ball like that afterwards, brilliant. Well, it looks like he's got a bad angle here, but it actually will at least get him up for the blue. Brown is more missable from here. Well, this is going to Nine. really hurt Ricky Walden in a best of seven frame match. If he was to lose this frame, it's going to hurt. Fourteen. What a shot that was, positionally. It wasn't difficult, but he just basically ended 20. the frame by playing that positional shot on the blue. 27 and the frame. Ding Jun Wei. Extraordinary escapology. Ding wins a frame he got no right to. We should be all square. In fact, Ding leads 2 0. And concludes today. And right now it looks as though Nopon Sankarm is heading towards the last 16. Made an 81 break to win the first frame against Zhao Gudong. He potted some really good balls in the second as well. And just as we go over, he Not misses Sankham. the most no. routine black off its spot imaginable. Zhao will be delighted with that. He must have been fearing the worst there. The winner of this match, Nopon against Zhao, will take on either Ding or Ricky Walden, the contest we're concentrating on what? on table one right now. Yeah, possible turning point over there with that miss. As far as our table, Ricky Walden's been gone a long time, and I don't blame him. Just hoping he will come back. Eight. Because that frame, to lose it, he might, he might be in the car on his way home. Because what a frame to lose. Two snookers no. on the yellow. Goodness me. I can confirm that he has returned. Did you wait to break? And there's nothing scientific about this. It just crops up time and time again when a player steals a frame, whether it's with a big clearance or needing snookers. So, so often they get an immediate scoring chance in the next. We'll see if that transpires here. Ding hopes it does. Reflecting on that frame, some of the snookers at Dingo were 
very good. None of them seem to be impossible to hit or anything like that, but just a barrage of snookers. Eventually, Walden missed a few in amongst the few that he did make contact with. Oh, well, how has that stayed out? That's gone all round the middle pocket. See this again, this tried very hard to drop. <laughs> One. Convention has been bugged. The player with the chance is the one who's trying to heal some wounds. Let me quickly tell you, the missed black Eight. not on Sankarm in the third frame that we saw over on table two was his last shot of the frame. Zhao did the rest, and that's why he's got his first frame on the board. Sankarm's lead reduced to 2-1. Nine. A little surprised he played the pink there. Well, he could have played the black and now the pink's going to get put in the bottom of the bunch. So the pink will be tied up. I don't think he's got perfect queuing on this next red anyway to the 50. middle. We can just get to send a ball striking in fairness. 16. Well, let's see how he bounces back after that last frame with this chance. Twenty three. Twenty-four. Wanted to get beyond the, the blue, so he had the angle to go into the reds. Now I'm not sure how he can get the bunch open. Forced to play on the red up the table when he didn't really want to. Twenty-nine. So we'll play the brown here off the right cushion. Nice target into the bunch. You have to force it, but it'll be one cushion to get the reds open. Oh no, it's come off the table. Foul. A few things happening to Walden today. I uh, wouldn't envy on any <laughs> wish on any other player. really have come off the table but it happens <coughs> the only positive for Walden after that shot he didn't get the cue ball into the reds
It's a very attacking safety shot. He has left reds on, though. And that is the problem when you go into the bunch. You know, you could play the perfect shot with the cue ball, but reds end up over a pocket. A better shot than it looked to hold for the black. Yeah, that's a shot that Walden's always gone to. Likes playing the drag Black shot. Ball. Likes playing that holder as well. Well, really, from here, he won't forget what happened in frame two, but if he were Eight. to win this frame, it would ease the hurt. Walden has been amongst the elite, a career high of sixth 11. in the world in 2015. He's made a 147 in professional competition. As Neil mentioned, three ranking titles on his CV. 12. 41 years of age. Lots of emotional scar tissue, of course. Added to by what happened in frame two. Can you brush that off? Ninety. Twenty. Twenty seven. to slow down a little bit looking at Extended various rest. shots he's got an awkward one here though i wouldn't blame him studying this got the the, the uh, extended rest out he might be able to just hit the edge of the cue ball don't think get to the dead center of it Sudden, the spider comes out. <laughs> Extension on it. Not nice to be playing these. Done okay, though. 28. And he doesn't want a repeat of frame two. I've mentioned it a few times, but he really has to just get this frame one.
Yeah, considering the circumstances, I think he's quite a very good frame here. And although frame ball is in, he 35. wants at least two or three more pots. Just to avoid that horrible stuff at the end of the previous frame. Forty-one. Forty-two. Forty-eight. Forty-nine. Yes, I think you're right. In, in general, his form looks really good. Obviously, he took a hit in the previous frame, but he has come back well. Now, what's he playing here? It looks like he's going to play some kind of a plant double or something. Ah. Goes up onto his own spot. Gonna play a plant double. He's gonna try. Ricky Walden, 55, and the friend. Not that it mattered. Lots of resilience there from Ricky Walden. He's got a frame on the board and he's feeling a whole lot better than he did around 15 minutes ago. It is the first world ranking tournament of the calendar year. It's the first round still. Thank you. Although Fourth that frame. will be over Ricky by Walden tea time. Tonight. And then we'll go into the last 16 this evening. Ding, halfway to being in the second round. But Walden will be heartened by the fact he won the, the third frame and indeed by the way he won it. Flying around. I mean, these shots always look worse when the, the object ball just crashes into them all. It's something you could never have predicted. It wasn't really a reckless shot, but it just what? looked bad. Entertaining match so far. These frames have been good. Six. A little different with one or two instances along the way. Seven. And I think it's important that Walden knows how to be ding. He's done so on multiple occasions. And on some big occasions also. Overcame ding in the 2013 UK Championship. And also, in the first round of the World Grand Prix, nine years ago. Twelve. I did not fancy his chances at all when he went 2-0 down. Thirteen. Now, though, I think those chances have been significantly revived.
As Julian Bell replaces the pink, I can tell you it is 3-1 now to 90. top on Sankom over Zhao Gudong. The fourth frame's still in progress, but it's out of reach. 20. Can you get through to the red? Close to the pocket. Just about, but getting onto his colour, not so simple. Playing cushion first to take him up the table. That was a good way of playing it. Very well played, in fact. And that shot, you see it played a lot, but often it goes wrong. That's how to do it. Perfect on the blue. Thirty-one. 32. Thirty seven. not happy about it. I think the red will go, the one he's looking at, but not into a full pocket. Might be forced to take the red furthest up, down the centre of the table instead, which is thin. Clearly it will go. Uh, he's playing this one. The other red's partly in the way of the pocket, the one near the, near the hole, and that's what happened. Ricky Walden, 37. He landed in the one place, which was no good to him in the end. Hit quite a lot of the red near the pocket there as well. So he was never really going to pot it. few mistakes creeping into Ding's game. The only problem with that shot that Walden's played, he's left access to that red on the left. Now, not to pot it, I don't think, but Ding could lay a very awkward shot back for Walden for his next shot. And that's the problem. That was why it was not a very good shot that Ricky played. He left himself open to that by taking that red on. He probably should have played the red up the table himself. And now he's in a world of trouble here. I mean, the only consolation is that there are safe reds 
if things went bad. But this escape is not nice. Mm. One of the safe reds is no longer safe as well. From Walden's perspective, that wasn't far from the worst possible outcome. No, but he, he set himself what? up for that, Bill. You know, he left that red. It's level. You leave the chance of a, a safety shot. I know he went for a red, but he didn't want to leave access to that left-hand red, and he, he got his uh, come up a little bit there. The first ball ding has potted for a while, I think. 20 minutes or something. Big moment in the match, though. If you, you know, if you could take this frame as well, Ding Junhui, then 3-1 leads a bit lopsided on the balance of play, but he won't care. That's not how he wanted it to be. Six. He tried to just push the pink out of the way and beyond that red that he... Looks like he's not on it now. Surely he's not looking at the plant. He's got reds everywhere to play. Hasn't looked at the red to left middle. I don't know why he's not playing that one here. Get up on the blue and open the reds again. I don't understand Seven. that shot. Why didn't he play the other red and get on the blue? I'll say one thing, though, he's played it well. Recovered the situation. Eleven. Upon the red, good angle, split up that bunch, and all of a sudden the frame could really open up. The Chinese number one. 17. Yeah, good call, Phil. This is the shot, isn't it, that uh, might determine who takes this fourth frame. If you can get the reds opened up. Well, he's definitely on the safest of all of the reds. The red along the cushion. He would have loved to be able to roll that red in. It would make the, the shot so much easier, but he had to punch it, and that is why it wobbled. He thought it was in, Phil. I'm pretty sure of that. He was surprised. It never dropped. In certain tables this season, that might have gone in on. This, I think, is very standard, the pocket size, as, as they should be, of course. One. 
that could be vital. Yeah, the players have a sixth sense when it comes to whether a ball will go, and when they believe it will, it normally does. Ding was incorrect, though. And now William has the opportunity to draw level. Eight. I think he'd love to get on the red just to the left of the black rather than the red on the extreme left. Somewhere where he's pointing the cue now would be absolutely perfect. Fourteen. Walden, 14. Well, he's just not putting the frames away. He wanted to go a little further with the cue ball on the previous shot, so straighter on it, but uh, he left the door open again for Ding Junhui. 29 points the lead, but if this goes in, it won't count for much. He's had a couple of issues with that right middle pocket. That one also was quite close. Perhaps played it a little bit slower, would have dropped in. Everything's there for whoever gets in. Yes, and of course, that's where, you know, it's, at this level, safety play really is important. You know, you know, some players are renowned for it, but, you know, you're never going to succeed at this level, the highest in the game, unless you have something to back it up with defensive skills. As the player with the advantage, Walden won't be displeased to see the brown going towards the ball cushion. Small chunk of insurance, perhaps.
Well, that was uh, what I was saying earlier. Ding put in a quick one there. That did not go through very smoothly, that cue. All a bit of a fast action. We're just putting extra pace into the ball. As I say, when he's in amongst them, there's no problem. Inadvertently, he's scruffed the table up, putting pink and black where they are. And again, that's no issue for Walden. Well, Ding came round to check those two reds as a plant. He can't get to them, but he doesn't want to leave it either. Don't think they're on with the cue ball up the table anyway. It's a good lead, though, as Phil said, 29 points now with colours safe. It's over by the shouting on table two. Not on Sankarn. At the table on a break of 60. Looks like he's going to defeat Jagodong 4-1. I don't think he meant to hit it quite at that angle. He hit it a lot of the red, quite thick contact. So the cue ball died really on the way back up the table.
The applause is for Nopon Sankar. He started off with a break of 81 in the first frame. He made 81 in the last, and he's through. Well, a nice pot, he's very close to this. I mean, he might be able to pot it, but can't do anything with the cue ball. I think he'll probably best to pot it, get the pink back on its own spot, but uh, what comes from that after it, I'm not sure. Just roll it in, I'm sure. <laughs> and he just reached. Seven. Maybe I'll cut that bottom red in. <coughs> there it is. I mean, a bit of a miss hit almost. Just fell in. I wonder if he can cut this red in, this thin contact up the table with the cue ball. Chance to pop, pop this and leave the double, perhaps, on the other red, on the last. That is what he's going to try, double it to the right middle. Fancy for this one, Neil. But at that pace... It was all in. It was, but that pocket is uh, causing him nightmares. I mean, again, this could easily have dropped in. Wow. One. Yeah, he didn't have to roll it in at that pace very much. I think sometimes with doubles, if you can just pump them in punch them at a medium pace. You often see them got, but rolling it, I don't know if it comes off the cushion in the same way as you think Six. it might. It's going to cost Eight. him the frame. Eleven. Two snookers needed. No Fifteen. Positional heroics from Walden. Thank you, Walden. Fifteen. I'll tell you what, in light of the fact he lost the second frame from well in front, and it's stolen from him to get back onto level terms here, is noteworthy. Good match, this. Welcome back to the Morningside Arena in Leicester. It is the World Grand Prix, the first event of the Player Series. Coming up next, what an enticing affair. Jack Lazowski taking on that man, Mark Allen. It could well be a final. In reality, it's the last 32. We've had some extraordinary first round matches. What about John Higgins taking on Sean Murphy and now another one coming up next. And this one could be really tight as well, you know, Ding against Ricky Walden. Had this red gone in, Neil Folds, it might well have been 3-1, but it refused to drop. Yeah, he played it gently, as you say, and uh, that pocket is causing him all kinds of problems. Three times now, it's looked like he, a ball would go in there that stayed out. Thank you. Frame five. Ding Jun way to break. That's one of the wonderful things about snooker. It is so unpredictable. Yes, we have patterns, but there's no hard and fast rules as to how matches will go. At 2-0, I think the vast majority of people here and watching around the world would have assumed Ding would win easily. 
Walden, though, has proved stubborn. Yeah, I mean, at 2-0, Ding having won a frame, needing two snookers, you know, he's looking very much like the winner. Walden's come back at him well, nicely, played some good stuff. Feels like a match which what? could easily go all the way because there's not a great deal between them. <clears throat> when you take all of their previous meetings into account Three. and include today's action so far, Ding's won 29 frames against Walden. Walden's won 32 against him. They have been evenly matched and... Four. That's exactly what's occurring here. Well, the angle is such that he's got the chance to get these reds away from the black spot. Could move all three of them here if he plays it well. He certainly doesn't want the black spot cluttered up like this. It's quite well controlled because the only red that's there is one he now can still pot. 11. Twenty. Well, he might have to go into these or find cushion. I don't think he'll play it. Right, next speed. Well, he doesn't want that one back. It's worked out well. He would have been a little unfortunate if he nothing, I think. Twenty-four. It's always been the case with Ding, in good times and 31. bad. Doesn't look particularly comfortable when it comes to broken play, but in amongst them. He's imperious. Thirty two. Just gotta run this around a couple of cushions here. 
That's not bad. As you say, his control is excellent. His range of shots amongst them is, uh, is right up there with most players. Forty. It's a very different game if you can control the cue ball. Ray Reardon has said that of course that is the ball that really counts and won anything else. If you've got control of the white ball then you're gonna be a good player. Well, this time, has he got control? Has he gone far 47. enough? Forty seven. See that will annoy him because usually he'd be on that red comfortably, but the pink is in the way. So there's the point we're making, you know, it's all about keeping control of the cue ball. Playing a series of easy shots in a row, but with position, and he's run out of it. Yeah. Ding Jong Wei, 47. You won't be happy with that, with that last shot that he played in the break. A little half smile there. He doesn't really know what to do. Playing off the left of the bunch. You know, I think his concern is pushing a red close to a pocket. Either way, he needs to get that cue ball into a very good area in bulk. Oh, he's hit it much too thick. Cue ball's kind of limped up just past the blue spot, so that was a worry. Straight away, he knew he'd got it wrong. Yes, Walden blundered, but it could have been so much worse. He left a, a red on for Ding that was far from a certainty. And in the end, look where that red has come to rest. Ding. Fortunate. Look where the cue ball has come to rest also. Long look at that, Walden, and he was happy to leave that red possible to the right corner, the one down the table, but of course it wouldn't be a very nice shot to have to play. He has left another thin shot to nothing red, though, into the same pocket. Tough. Ding relieved, he only just caressed the green, didn't make a, a bold, robust contact with it.
The second match of the afternoon on table two has begun. Dominic Dale against Jagander. That is troublesome. It's one of those where you can see plenty of shots clearly, reds clearly. But getting a safety shot from those, not so easy. You might be able to hit the left side of that red to the right of the black and turn the cue ball back. The trouble is the red is maybe hitting the other two reds. They could all finish anywhere. Well, that's not the worst outcome, but he wasn't all that clear on it. How it was going to be there. Good shot, though. Looking at here, some kind of a exotic three ball plant that would be a really tough shot. Now he, he's thought again. Colours all in their spots normally suggests. That's a good thing for the player who's trailing, but where the reds are, it's going to be a lengthy journey back into this for Walden. Is he's got a good lead, hasn't he? But it doesn't mean anything really where the balls are. I think he's not won the frame by any stretch. The colours all on their spots that kind of helps matters for Walden chasing the frame. Pretty good shot, that. I like that. Sending the cue ball at quite an unusual angle back to the bulk end. That's got to be a good shot. He's the world number 25, Ricky Walden. He has qualified for the forthcoming German Masters. In the position he finds himself in, being seeded for the Crucible is not out of the question. If he can go deep in events, he's got plenty of time and plenty of tournaments to achieve that goal. But going deep here would be of great assistance. Ooh. 
He's fighting really hard in a match of vital importance for him. Good safety shot to an extent. I mean, it was hard what he was trying. But there are reds now potable. And with Ding already in front, he wouldn't need to add all that much to his lead to get the frame one. One. He's not really a, a player with cue power to get the cue ball right out of that little corner. Ding Junwei, one. It was a pressure ball, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, looking at it from that other angle, it was never quite there. Thought it might drop in at first, but seeing it again, it was never in. Alden has definitely slowed down. At one point, he was going 18 seconds per shot. That's increased considerably. 25 seconds per shot. He's been in a few scrapes, though, positions of difficulty, which he's had to think out. But even when he has been in, he just slowed down again. That's what he sometimes does. It was more noteworthy that early on he was playing really quickly. That was asking an awful lot. Well, with the black over the pocket, it was worth the risk, but uh, not quite making inroads into this deficit, Walden. That was a dangerous shot to play, and all of a sudden there is a real opportunity here for Ricky Walden, albeit with those three reds, the big problem later, all next to each other. The immediate 
future. He's got a chance to knock three or four red colours in. Got lucky what? there. Got very lucky there. Hit the other red on the way through. Not planned, of course. Now, is he going to go into them right now or is he going to wait a bit longer? Now's an opportunity. It's a big target. Played it well. It's hard to Six. refuse playing that cannon, I think. So he's already lost a frame that he should never have lost. Now he, not quite as dramatic, but could this one where he trailed by nearly 50 points. So. <clears throat> they will take some working out, of course. But Walden knows, at the very least, he should be right back in the frame at the end of this visit. If you're just joining us, Ding made a 63 break in the first frame. Remarkably, he won the second after needing two snookers on the colours, cleared the colours to snatch it on the black. Since then, though... 30. Walden has been clawing back. Yeah, and he can play on the red down the cushion here with the black over the pocket as well, so he doesn't have to do it. He could play on the red below the pink. But I think while the black's over the pocket... That's an opportunity to play the other red. Because you could just drop the red in, the black's there for him. 18. Nineteen. Now, the removal of this red, that changes the whole outlook of the frame. If he gets this, he becomes favourite. Yes, it just gave him the chance to play it dead weight, not worrying about getting on a colour. Thirty-three. So a big shot, not so much the red. Just Getting position on a colour at the right angle to drop behind the other red down the table.
34. This could be the the linchpin shot, if not this one. Certainly potting the, the red across the top cushion would be. Oh, and the flick off the pink it has been heavenly. Yeah, it was quite a good effort anyway, 36. wasn't it? I think it had been perhaps still on the red, but very close to it. But the flick was very good, as you rightly say. 37. Now, there's more than one way of playing this. You could just run it through, or you could go the two-cushion route, which takes you in between yellow and brown. But no, one cushion across. Forty-four. Fractionally too far. Forty-six. Two behind, so Walden needs to clear to the pink. Fifty three. He's done very well here, isn't he? he Fifty eight. Credit to him. Right behind the pink, and it's a frame that uh, will make him feel a lot better about the way the match has gone. Sixty four on the frame. You have Walden. to give so much credit to Ricky Walden. At 2-0 down, he must have been feeling awful. Now, he's feeling pretty good. Ricky Walden has dug deep so far to get to this position. Yeah. He's not Thank you, over the line six. yet. Ricky Walden to break. But he's got a lot to be proud about. And I think it's also worth making the point, the ding after coming very close to winning the UK Championship, losing out to Ronnie O'Sullivan 10-7 in the final, things haven't gone well. In fact, if he were to be beaten today, it would be his fourth consecutive defeat on the tour. Lost in the last 32 of the Scottish Open to Tom Ford, then didn't qualify for the German Masters, losing to Yuan Sejun, and of course that defeat by O'Sullivan in the first round of the Masters last week. I think it's fair to say, Neil, he's under it. Yeah, it seems to happen like that all the time with him, doesn't it? You know, he plays ever so well at the UK Championships, as we were saying earlier, and then disappears off the radar a little bit. But he's not played poorly today. And also, he's fighting for every point. It's not as if he's going through the motions or anything. But for now, he's just... As you say, bang up against it. A good shot. Needs a little flick on something. One. Not happening. Already in the tournament, we've seen Three. a healthy amount of deciding frame finishes. Four.
He's played in a great area there. If he's on that rail, he Eight. desperately wants to be on it. I think he might have just drifted a fraction too far. That would have cleared the right side of the table for the black to that pocket. Nine. That's all right. Fourteen. Fifteen. It's a very good split. He deserves good things to come from it. <laughs> Nicely done. Twenty. He what he likes and in the previous frame he got in with a contribution of 47 didn't go on from there lost the frame needs to make a few more clearly it's as simple as that yes and the 47 ended not because he missed a pot it was due to an uncharacteristic positional misjudgment Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. He was up off that one pretty quickly. Concerned he might have caught too much jaw. A bit straight as well on the blue. Managed to force an angle. Yes, he was concerned. I think he had felt he'd missed it. 34. 34. Yeah, well, that's... Keyboard 35. On, barely moved there. Had no zip, no timing in the shot. 34. Wow, it could hit any harder. The blue ball almost popped out the middle pocket there. It's a good shot. 40. I mean, there's only so hard you can 41. hit a ball before it popped out. We saw Matt Stelp the other day have a black bounce out of a corner. This blue almost tried to come out there. Yeah, it was a very good shot. Good recovery. Quite an interesting match, isn't it? With the likelihood now it, it will go all the way. 46. He has more to do to make that happen. 47. I think, given the way the match has gone, a decider would be appropriate. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. 
Surely that was a bad shot, wasn't it? How was he finished there when he he could have gone up the table? There's a lot of things he could have done playing on the you know, the pink. He's finished short. It's not an easy shot to just hold for a red now. So he'll be I'm surely not happy with that last shot. Once again, he's pulled some out of the wreckage there. He's played a good shot back. 61. And now this is frame ball, because barring snookers, we've already been there once in this frame when <coughs> Walden lost the frame needing it. And Ding wanted two. So we kind of always say 62. frame ball, but we know it's not. In this case, I think it's going to go all the way. Highest break of the match so far. 69. Supplanting a couple of 63s. Seventy. He's going to add to his tally of century breaks. Impressive career stats. This cue ball is going to have to go all round the angles between the brown and yellow. Well, never mind. Never mind about the century, Phil. Yeah, the main priority was to win the frame, extend yeah. the match to its full distance, and that's precisely what Ding has done. It's a busy day here at the snooker. First round concludes, and this evening, the second round, the last 16, begins. Mark Selby against Ali Carter. Then Mark Williams against Hossein Vafai. The action coming your way at 6.45pm. Just a reminder, on ITV3. And there's Hossein Vafai watching Ronnie O'Sullivan in the practice room. Had a little spat before the World Championship this year, but clearly... Thank you, deciding frame. Things you to break. Mended in that regard. <coughs> that was another needle match, wasn't it? As if there's not enough involving the rocket. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, of all the players that Ronnie has not always seen eye to eye with, I don't think Ding Junhui or even Ricky Walden have ever been in that group. It's a rare group of people, all friends. There's a very specific dynamic when it comes to deciding frame finishes. It's win or bust. Over the years, we've had plenty of players who've been super successful in them. Others who've really struggled. Walden this season, he's won his share. It's been around, Neil, notable for multiple tied finishes.
Would you believe half of the matches so far in the tournament have gone all the way down to the wire? Of course, the one that was straightforward was the one that looked the, the tightest one to call, didn't it? My Sean Murphy and John Higgins. That was uh, Sean Murphy played brilliantly. And it was over in, I think, 41 minutes of playing time. But that was a match you could have easily thought would go to seven frames, not four. Wow. That was a long on left hand side. He obviously couldn't pot it directly without using side. Trouble is, that side has taken the cue ball close to the right cushion. So the next shot's not easy. These are never a nice shots queuing down on the ball. Very well played. Yes, received a smattering Eight. of applause, but deserved a lot more. Could lead to big things, this. Then again, well, then oh, eight. what a miss. It's just the extra bit that he put on the cue ball there. He seemed to lose his accuracy. Well, he could pop this up into the top left. It's obviously a difficult shot. He hopes not to leave anything easy. Doesn't go in, and it hasn't gone in. One. It's a funny old game, Snooker. Walden misses a red from point blank range and then knocks that one in. Yeah, he's given himself that second opportunity, though, isn't he? Five. Very good long red. Now a chance, although buying the two reds out in the open play, you know, he's got to make make this happen. Getting the bunch open. Six. That's a very positive strike. Is he gonna do it here? Of course there's always the temptation to play on the the one loose red, but really he knows that he's gotta get these reds all in play. And this is a chance to do that. Gonna hit this very hard. <coughs> yeah, he's on anything, is he? And this is a plant. Maybe the first red. Will that go? Goodness, he was a bit unlucky there. Thought he played it very positively. Doesn't go, does it? I mean, it's, the black's just in the way. Ricky Walden, Ellen. That's where luck plays a part in this game. You know, he didn't do a lot wrong on the blue. He just had no shot to pot a red after it. He took what was the positive approach. If he'd played on the, the loose red, he still had the problem the next time he came to the table or the next couple of shots to get the reds in play. So he's 
Just accumulated 19 points with two chances. Not really going to be enough to inconvenience Ding Junhui if his chance arrives. He's not been reliable from distance in this contest. Knocked in a great yellow when he cleared up after needing two snookers in the second frame. That apart though, I think he's potting from distance has been, even for him, quite poor. Only 50% equal to Walden's. <laughs> One. Well, he, he missed a red, didn't he, along there, which which was probably no more difficult than this. He's going to be rolling it in, though, this time, which allows much more leeway. But in rolling it in, now he's got a thin shot on the red, coming down the, the bulk end, perhaps, certainly away from the high-value colours. But in the decider, you've just got to chip away, I think, where the balls are. Lovely to think you get in and make a century in the decider and win it in one visit, but the game's not always like that. Cue ball is the issue here, and the red, it turned out. Ricky Walden, eight. In snooker, there are several cliches. You hear them in press conferences sometimes. When it goes to a decider, a player says, all I want in a decider is one chance. Walden's had three. And he's only got 27 points on the board. Will that be a source of regret? Neil, it's never been a very fluent match, this. Right now, it's downright edgy. There shouldn't be too big a problem with the safety shot if he's playing one, sending the cue ball round. Quite a nice target for the safety shot now that the brown has gone quite close to the yellow. There's always a chance to hide the cue ball in there. That little area where the, the bolt colours are now. And using the sort of figure of eight, as we call it, swinging it wide here into that area now. And fluking a red. A bonus. So otherwise a good safety shot anyway. Looks like he's considering playing the green. Coming down towards the reds, the lead of 28, clearly not going to be enough. There's always the temptation to play the, the roll up, but the green is very possible from there. That's the one downside, isn't Ricky it? Ricky Walden, one. 
He knew he was going to finish on reds. He's missed a couple in this frame. In fact, three very gettable shots he's missed. One. Is that a game changer? To get that black in play like that. The way that split happened, you wonder. Eight. Did the snooker gods run out of patience with Walden? Four chances for 28 points. Nine. Well, that's not ideal either. That really is. It left him a very thin shot on the black, very close to it as well. Yeah, I always think about where his cue is on the cushion. It tells you how thin this shot would be. This is not a nice shot. But I think he feels obliged to play it after the last shot we got the black out. Bit hesitant on it, wasn't he? Ding Chung Hui, nine. Oh, goodness, what a result. I mean, you take that black on thinking, I've got to get it, it's probably do or die in the match. You miss it, and you get an outrageous piece of good fortune. Could have skimmed off either side of the bunch, it caught the red. The apex red on the nose and stuck. It's the typical decider. Well, luck plays a big part in this game, and he's missed this by far enough. Heading down to the important part of the table. <laughs> oh, two real good guys there. You know, I'll tell you what, it wouldn't have been very nice <laughs> for Ricky. He must have been thinking, well, I could have won the match there. Now he doesn't know what to play, even. Never mind having a pot. Look at that, nearly two minutes. That's a good while, isn't it, to be looking at a shot? Well, yesterday, Sean Murphy won a frame against John Higgins with a break that lasted four minutes. Mired in indecision. Indecision flows from being nervous, being nervous occurs because there are high stakes. It would be a very big win for Walden, this. He doesn't really want to take that bit off the cushion, I suppose. Well, they say there's only one shot here. Unfortunately, I've no idea what it is. That's where he's at. Well, it's come up to three minutes now. I mean, he's have to play something. I don't think he knows it's this long, you know. What 
Well, the quickest ever frame was three minutes. Tony Draco against Danny Fowler all those years ago. Well, he's still not sure. It's a bit too long, really, isn't it, to be looking at that shot? Let's be honest. It wasn't that difficult a shot, really. Yes, he might have had a few problems there. If he could have got in behind the brown, he'd have been fine. And ultimately, Neil, what? it wasn't worth the wait. No. I suppose he was in a bit of trouble, but it seems a good while to be pondering over a shot like that. Anyway, it's uh, it's very tough out there. We've all been in positions where we just don't know what to play. It must have been one of those. But... Ding was very lucky from the shot before, and he's been given a reprieve. Eight. Sixteen. Seventeen. Well, he's played the cannon, and to his 22. great relief, he's on that first red, past the other one. Tight, though. 23. He's had quite a few things this match, and uh, you, you get the feeling at one point it would be a really close decider, but Dink can avoid that here with this opportunity. As we've gone deeper into the match, though, I think it's been noticeable that the queuing of Dink has become less and less smooth. Normally, you expect him to clear these nicely. Second nature. But there have been a few positional mistakes that 36. he's got away with. 37. Not completely discounting another twist. No, nor me, but it would be a to his great disappointment if he didn't win the match here. Because he's on the, the brink, needs both reds. 44. Forty-five. One thing I will say, Ricky was playing fluently at the beginning of the match. 18 seconds a shot, ticking along, and now he's on 27 seconds a shot. So somewhere something's gone wrong. Been in a bit of trouble, of course, during spells of the match. He'd be very disappointed, 52. especially to have lost frame two. That's what's made all this happen, I think. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> that was much ball. It just thought about it. That was Ricky's last hope. Been longish, but entertaining, I think, this match. 58. Absolutely. Ding, relieved. 60. Walden, very disappointed. He wasn't lucky. There's no getting away from that. 
But the fact remains, 63. he had four chances before. Did only 28 points from them. You can see he's very disappointed, Ricky Ball. He's one of the game's 67. good guys. And a really top player for a while. Not quite at that height now. 72. Four Chinese players into the last 16 here. Yu Hao Shan, Zhou Yu Long. Foul. Kao Yu Peng is now, despite that. Ding Junwei. He was taken all the way by Ricky Walden. But in the end, he found something in the decider. Helped by a fair slice of good fortune. Ding Junwei defeats Ricky Walden 4 3. He'll play Nopon Sankarm next.